summer is fantastic, but ticks and fleas, not so much. So in this video, we're going to go over everything, and I mean everything that you need to know to set up your own multimodal parasite management plan for you, your family, and your dogs and cats. We're going to go over how you can make your animals less attractive to ticks and fleas, so things that they can eat and things that you can put on them. We're also going to see what you can do to your environment to make it less attractive for ticks and fleas. And finally, we're going to go over three scenarios on how I would change my parasite management plan depending on different conditions so that you can kind of get a sense on how you can set it up for yourself. All of the main topics of everything that we'll talk about has its own video that I will have linked in the description. So if you find things that you find particularly interesting and you want to look more into it, then go ahead and check them out after this video. Now, when talking about making your animals less attractive to ticks and fleas, the first thing that you need to think about is nutrition, so things that they can eat. Now, the first and basic most important thing is actual nutrition. And you know that I'm a huge proponent of the raw diet. It's made a huge difference in Iberia, and I've actually haven't had huge issues with fleas with her since we started the raw diet, which we did when I first got her and she was on kibble. And I was really happy to see this study that shows that raw food does stimulate the skin to have stronger immune defenses and to produce more antioxidants and more anti-inflammatory properties. It's really a fantastic start and what I feel is the baseline of my parasite management plan. The next thing we can do is to give supplements and one of these is garlic. Now garlic is a little bit controversial. There have been studies that have shown that dogs can come down with anemia. Now of course you should always do your research before choosing to add something to your animal's diet. But And I really wanted to show you this study. It's really interesting. So they fed 50 pound dogs a bulb of garlic, whole bulb of garlic every day for a week and then they follow them to see if they would develop anemia and none of them had any issues. I have a few products that I'm going to link below that I have heard really good things about but I haven't used myself. If you're planning on feeding raw garlic, keep in mind that allicin, the compound that actually is more active in garlic, is only activated when you crush garlic. So if your dog or cat are not big chewers, then make sure that you pre-crush the garlic before you give it to them. And if you're wondering how much garlic to feed your dog, then I'll leave you in the description linked an article that goes over how to feed garlic and how much to give. When it comes to supplements, you can also go the herbs route. So there are several herbs that you can use. I have personally used this product. It's called Billy No Mates, and I've had really good luck with Iberia with it. Um, it's found here in Europe. I'm not sure if you can find it in North America, but you can kind of look at what the herbs are in it and find something that's similar. You can also give them cistus tea, which is a tea made with rock rose herb, which is a herb that grows in the Mediterranean region, so Italy, Greece, Turkey. And it's supposed to be really, really good for keeping ticks away because it helps your pet develop a smell that ticks don't really like. So it really works really well as a repellent in that sense. I haven't used it myself, I just discovered it, but I thought it was really interesting and I will leave you linked the two articles that I found on it so that you can decide if maybe you should incorporate it for you and your pets. What I like about this nutritional app aspect of pest management is that it actually maximizes your pet's health. And we know that parasites actually seek out animals that are weak and not doing so well in their health. So if your animal is doing really well and really healthy, and some of these tips, so around nutrition and some of these supplements can really, really help to maximize their health, then they're actually not going to be as attractive to ticks and fleas. So you're already reducing the number of ticks and fleas that would possibly find your dog and cat and might possibly bite them. The next step in a parasite management plan is to look at things that you can put on your animals that will prevent ticks and fleas from getting on them. And we can divide them into two big groups, repellents and deterrents. Repellents will actually make it so that ticks and fleas don't like to get on your animal, and deterrents will make it so that once they bite, they will not bite again. I like to put particular emphasis on repellents because I feel that if I can prevent ticks from getting on my animals, I don't have to worry about ticks actually biting my animals. And the great things about repellents is that all of them are natural and non-toxic. Amber necklaces are a wonderful repellent to start with. So they are pretty to look at, they're non-toxic, and they work two ways. So they release succinic acid, which is an acid that kind of confuses ticks and fleas. So they don't really recognize your dog and cat as being dogs and cats. So they're not going to try and jump on them. But it also has a troiboelectric effect, which is actually just static electricity that forms when the amber collar actually rubs against your dogs and cats fur, it will create static electricity and the static electricity will confuse and kind of deter ticks and fleas from continuing to try to burrow into your dogs and cats fur. I discovered them here in Germany where they are widely used and most people report seeing a lot less ticks on their dogs and cats when they're using them. Studies are a little bit conflicted. They can't prove that they help. They also can't prove that they don't help. And I figure they're non-toxic, they look good, why not? 
it's one less stick, which is really helpful. Next, you want to look at essential oils, which are really powerful and they work really well in repelling ticks and fleas. The main essential oils that I like to use are neem oil, geranium oil, cedar wood oil, and some citronella oil. But you can also use catnip oil and peppermint and cinnamon oil. Now, the fantastic thing about neem and catnip oil is that they're a little bit less volatile. They have a particular smell, but it's not as strong as the other ones. So it's really good for animals that are particularly sensitive. The other oils are also very good, but they're usually used in smaller amounts. Obviously, all essential oils should be used diluted in a recipe. And if you're interested, I, of course, have a few recipes that I use generally. I make a shampoo that I use once a week, and then I have a spray and a spot on that I use depending on where I go so that I can better protect the barrier and myself from ticks and fleas. A few things to keep in mind when you're using essential oils. First of all, obviously dilute them. Don't use them straight. You can put them on a bandana and put that on your dog if you want to when you're going into the woods, but keep in mind to take then the bandana off after you are done because if you put them so close to their nose, it can be really harsh. And even for people that can be really a lot. So what you can do instead of using a bandana is of course using a spray or using a spot on and make sure that you reapply it. So whether your dog goes swimming or when you go hiking, every two to four hours, you have to reapply them on your dog, on your cat, if they come hiking with you or also on yourself and on your family. Now with essential oils, it's really important to make sure that they are well dissolved. So make sure that you are shaking your bottles and little solutions well, otherwise you could be applying way too much or not enough. And the other thing to keep in mind that some of them, for example, neem oil is one of them, do get a little bit harder and then they get solid when the temperatures drop. So obviously it's usually summer, so we don't have to worry about it. But if you are worried, you could keep a little bottle in your jacket or in your pocket where it's going to stay warm. And incidentally, it's also going to move and stay in solution. So those are things that you might want to keep in mind if you're making your own solutions and also if you're buying solutions. The reason why essential oils work so well and the reason why I like them so much is that they work by releasing right, the smell and that smell is actually a repellent against arthropods. They get really confused by them and they basically don't get on you on your animals. Now, they can, if used directly on the pest, they can actually really work as pesticides, but usually then they have to be 100% and not diluted and that's a little bit much. So usually the greatest effect that they have is by repelling them because of the smell. Now, of course, with essential oils, you have to be really careful of the ones that you buy. I did link down below the ones that I use for my own animals, but always do your own research and be careful that you are buying real essential oils and you're not buying synthetic ones or ones that may contain some toxic chemicals inside of them. The next repellent that I love to use that I haven't used yet myself, but I am planning on using this summer are tags. There are several options that you can buy, such as shoe tag, pet protector, easy defense, and tickless. And they work by releasing a frequency that confuses arthropoda, so ticks and fleas. And they basically cannot recognize that there is an animal that they may be attracted to nearby. And they basically don't jump on you or grab onto you. I really like that they are non-toxic and they don't really add a burden to our animal's organism. And what's great is that usually have really great warranty. So should you use one in addition to everything else and then find ticks on your dog, then you can definitely send it back and get your money back. As I'm sure you figured out by now, I tend to prefer a multimodal approach where I add small little things that together help to protect my pets from ticks, fleas, and the diseases that they carry. What I really like about this approach is that it really keeps the burden that I put on my animal's body really low. All of these things are non-toxic and they can be added together and work in sync to protect my animals. If this video has been helpful to you so far, I have a huge favor to ask. Would you mind pressing the like button? It does help the algorithm figure out who likes to see this kind of content. And if it's helpful for you, like it was helpful for me, it might be helpful to another pet owner. And the other thing I'm going to ask you is to please subscribe to my channel if this is the kind of information you like to see. I am a brand new content creator. I put a lot of effort. It takes hours and hours of research to put things together for a short video. And I'm trying to bring you all of the information that is available so that you can make the best choices. So it's the best way to support my channel. I would really appreciate it. And the last thing I'm going to ask you is to share this video with somebody else who might be wondering what to do about ticks and fleas and also obviously share our channel because the point is to grow together as pet owners and to learn from each other. All right, so enough with the plug. <laughs> Thank you so much. Let's go to deterrent. So deterrents are what will stop ticks and fleas from biting again. And did you hear that? I said biting again. And yes, because despite what is being told to us and what we're being indoctrinated with was, oh, you know, if you use tick and flea meds, 
fix and fleas won't bite your dog. That's not right. That's not right. So basically what happens is fix and flea medication will basically run through your dogs and cats blood and when ticks actually go and fleas of course bite your animal then they will take in blood that contains the pesticide and it will kill ticks and fleas between you know a couple of hours to 48 hours later but this actually means that your animal was bitten so the chance of your animal actually getting that tick-borne disease is still there even when they're protected by tick and flea mats. This is why I put so much emphasis in repellents, because if we can decrease the amount of ticks and fleas that we'll think about getting our animals, that's basically the first battle to win in the war against ticks and fleas and their diseases. Of course, there are still times where it might be necessary to use tick and flea medication. So what you need to know is this. There's five major families of tick and flea medication, and what they do is they attack two major neurotransmitters, GABA and acetylcholine. So they either kill arthropods by paralysis or by spastic spasms. So basically, they either cause them to seize until they die or they cause them not to be able to move until they die. The issue with this is that these actually can impact us mammals as well. Us, as in us humans as well. So I don't know if you know this, but if you had to give tick and flea medication to your animals, you are not allowed to touch them. Even if you're giving them the oral medicine, you are not allowed to touch it with your bare hands because they are highly toxic. And just like they're highly toxic for us, they're highly toxic for our dogs and cats. So what can we do? We can go through a detox. Now, for humans, there's actually major detox protocols that you would have to go through if you actually were exposed, so you were to touch some of these. And as pet owners, I'm sure if you put it on your dog like I had to put it on Iberia, you end up touching it. It's impossible not to. And how many of us actually remember to use gloves? So what we can do is we can go through a detox protocol for us and for our animals. So the reason why I'm talking about a detox is because all of these medicines from the five families are metabolized in the liver. So they're really heavy on your animal's liver. And we can actually help the liver kind of cleanse itself using three major supplements. Now, the first one is milk thistle. It's fantastic. It's my number one liver cleanse. And it's actually a cleanse that I do for myself and my animals every March, because March in traditional Chinese medicine is the month of the liver. The other ones that you can consider are curcumin, which is basically the active ingredients in turmeric root, glutathione, and also broccoli sprouts. Now, if you want to know a little bit more, of course, I have a video that's only on ticks and flea meds, but Things to keep in mind is if your animal had a reaction to one type of tick and flea med, it might have a reaction to all of the other families that act on the same neurotransmitter. So go ahead and check out the other video and try to figure out what you can do. Also keep in mind that if your animal had a reaction, it doesn't necessarily mean that after you stop giving it to them, the reaction will stop. And just because they didn't have a reaction the first time, it doesn't mean they may not be having a reaction, kind of that's a little bit delayed. So they're always, it's, it's kind of a necessary evil sometimes, but I want you to be very mindful of what you're doing when you're choosing to give them. Make sure that you go and talk to your veterinarian, possibly a holistic veterinarian that can help you kind of balance the heavy toxicity that you're giving with maybe a good detox, maybe some homeopathic remedies, and can really help guide you in this. All right, so the last thing that we can do to keep our animals safe is to do a tick check. It's simple, right? Like when we go to the heavy woods, like we would always do tick checks on each other and on people and why not on animals? Keep in mind that ticks like warm and moist places. So on their armpits, between their legs, under their tail and around their neck and kind of behind their ears are places where ticks like to borrow. So it's always helpful to go with a small comb and kind of comb your dog and make sure that there aren't any ticks that are kind of finding their way in there. Okay, so we've now protected our animals. We can now think about protecting our environment. So indoors or outdoors. There's two products that you can use, diatomaceous earth and nematode. Now diatomaceous earth is, again, a little bit controversial, but it can be used at home if you have a flea infestation to kind of kill the fleas in your carpeting. And some people also use them on their animals. What is it and why is it controversial? Now diatomaceous earth is basically silica crystals and they are very, very small and very, very sharp. And they will basically dry out and um, damage the bellies of arthropods. So it basically kills them. Now the issue with silica is that it can be really hard for our health if it's swallowed or inhaled. And it can cause really lifelong issues such as silicosis or black lung disease. So I am not a huge proponent for diatomaceous earth, but I know that many people use it and I wanted to mention it to you. The other thing that you can use to protect your outdoors are nematodes. 
Now, nematodes are small little round worms and they attack sticks and fleas and they kill them. So they're fantastic because they are very species specific. You actually should get them at your local um, garden store. You can buy them online, but sometimes they will arrive dead. So it's better to see if you can source them locally. And usually when you go to the garden center, they will also give you a little bit of a table because there's different nematodes depending on which bugs that you want to kill. And obviously for us pet owners, it's ticks and fleas. Now using nematodes is kind of fighting biology with biology, so as always keep in mind that just because they're attacking ticks and fleas, it doesn't mean they're not attacking other bugs that may be beneficial in your yard. Usually they are fairly species specific, so if you choose the ones that are a problem for ticks and fleas, they are not going to hurt your pollinators and your butterflies, so it will keep your yard and our environment healthy and thriving. I'm going to mention one more thing that you can do to check to see if you have ticks in your yard. You can just basically use the white flag method. So just get a piece of cotton and attach it to a string and then run it on the grass. If there are any ticks on your grass, they will probably hang on to that piece of cloth. And when you check it, you can check and see if they're there. Now, it's not thinkable that you'll be able to remove all of them from your yard using this method, but I think it's a good way to check how heavy your load is throughout the year. And especially if you're using nematodes, if you don't have any, then maybe it's not necessary to use them. As always, it's not about doing all of the things, but only doing the things that are necessary at that moment in that season. So the final ingredient, and I would, I would say the key ingredient to a multimodal parasite management plan, as I just said, is not to just do all the thing, but to do the thing that you need for your animal. And testing is one of them. Just because we're protecting our animals, and as I said before, even with conventional ticks and flea medication, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're not going to get bitten, and they may not come positive for some of the diseases that we're trying to protect them from. The key here is to catch it early. So the key is to test. So there's two tests that you can choose from. AccuTest from Antec Labs or SNAP4DX from IDEX. Now they're basically the same thing, even though there's a study, I'll link it for you, but it mentioned that maybe SNAP4DX might be a little bit better, but nonetheless, so they will check for the four major diseases that can be passed by ticks and fleas. So basically by going to your vet and doing this one test, you'll find out if your dog or cat is positive for heartworm, Lyme's disease, anaplasmosis, or ehrlichiosis. I usually do a test before and after tick, flea, and mosquito season to make sure that Iberia and my cats are free from any of these diseases because you just never know. And it really helps me spend the rest of the winter kind of relaxed knowing my animals are healthy. Now, what's great about these tests is that you can really check the state of health of your animal. And if they do test positive, because you were checking just for health and not because there were symptoms, it is in the very early stages and it's really easy to take care of some of these diseases. Now, if the tests were to come back positive for you, it doesn't necessarily mean that your dog or cat does have the disease. It just means that they've seen this disease, so they had an immune reaction to it. So there are tests that you can do after these that will help you determine whether your animal actually has a disease and then you can go ahead and treat them for it or they just saw the disease. So as you can see, there's lots to know, but it's actually once you start, fairly simple to kind of start adding and building your parasite management plan. So let me run through a couple of scenarios of what I have run into with my animals to kind of give you an idea of how I thought of it and how I built it to what I'm doing today. I'm going to start with today. So we are in Germany and we are actually in a place we just moved that has a really, really low tick population, basically zero flea population and basically zero mosquitoes. We are not endemic for any of the diseases that are tick, flea or mosquito borne, which is actually the first time in my animal's lives that we're in this situation. So this is how I handle it. So I use my shampoo to kind of give Iberia particularly a shampoo once a month because she does go outside a little bit more. And I started about three weeks before the season started, which this year was really late. We, we didn't get warm and thick season officially didn't start until basically beginning of June. So I actually gave her her first shampoo at the beginning of May. You always want to start about three weeks before when you are using natural remedies. So obviously I put her amber color on, I gave her her shampoo, and I basically just continued continue with the shampoo once a month and the amber collar and I am comfortable that she is safe and healthy and I don't need to do anything extra. Now because we're not in an area that's endemic for heartworm or Lyme's disease then I don't feel the need to give her any heartworm medication or to use any commercial meds because obviously it's not around us. Now when it comes to my cats 
Right now, we don't have this beautiful yard set up yet for them. We are waiting for the fence to come. So they're basically just indoor cats. Now, because there is no heartworm, because there are no ticks or fleas, they are currently getting nothing because they see nothing. So I don't need to worry about their health, but I will do a health check at the end of summer just to make sure. All right, so my second scenario is what's going to happen this summer. Viveri and I are going to go on vacation. I'm actually bringing my dog on vacation. It's a vacation for her. I'm, it's, a, it's a whole new level of dog ownership. It's, it's a whole new level of crazy for some people, but for me, it's fantastic to be able to bring my 14-year-old dog on a vacation that I know she's going to love. But anyway, we're going to a place that we've been to before in the south of Germany. And the problem with this place is that it is endemic for Lyme's disease. It's actually a huge problem down in Bavaria. So what am I going to do? Iberia is 14 years old, so I am very mindful of what I give her. So I'm definitely going to keep her uh, amber color on. I'm definitely going to use the shampoo, but I will put the shampoo on her about a month before and then about two weeks later and then right before we leave I'll do another one so I will do two weeks and then two weeks and then when we're there we're only there for a week but if we were there for longer I would keep it once a week I would do a shampoo leave it on her for about 10 minutes to make sure that the neem oil actually penetrates in her skin and in her fur and then I can rinse her off and I would also use the spot on that I make anytime any time in the morning when we're going out I would put it on her legs and kind of you know on her belly and behind her ears because those are the places where ticks really like to kind of burrow and I really want to discourage that I'm also in the process of getting a tickless tag that I'm going to use on myself and on her and of course at the end of of every day I'm going to do a tick check and should she like I'm expecting go into the water I will also bring my spray and my spot on with me when we're going in the woods and by the rivers so that when she gets out of the water I can quickly reapply and basically check her so that I'm sure that I'm doing everything that I can to keep her healthy and the final scenario has to do with my cats so Iberia got fleas and the problem was that one of my cats is extremely allergic so she started scratching and I was really worried I took Iberia I gave her another bath I tried to give a bath to the cat it didn't work out well I realized after a day or two that it just things aren't going well and so I went and talked to my veterinarian and I decided to go with Frontline which is Fipronil and I applied Frontline to Iberia and to my cats in addition to that I also took everything that they slept on including my bed and my couch covers and I washed them all in boiling water because that actually kills ticks and fleas and the problem was solved I used it only once, as you can see. It was necessary. There is no way that with natural methods I would be able to stop it. And I was really worried that because um, Caledonia is actually allergic to tick bites, that things would get really bad. So there are times, as I said, where using tick and flea medication might be useful. Now, of course, because I use tick and flea medication, afterwards I went through a detox myself and Iberia and also for the cats to kind of help their livers. All right, so I tried to put all of the information that you need to know into this video. Everything is timestamped for you so that you can jump back and forth and kind of see what you need when you need it. And there's also extra videos that are going to be linked below that go in a lot of details for each one of these. So depending on which one you want to look at, you can find them below. And if it was helpful and you enjoyed it, give us a like, do subscribe to our channel and share it with other people that love animals and have animals and really want to take better care of them. And, you know, get them to subscribe as well if you think that they'd be interested. So thank you very much. No more plugs. Have a wonderful day. Give your dog and cat a kiss from us and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.